greetings in the name which is above all other names, that of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. My name is Brian Mason and this is part three of the Bible study, Thou Art My God. Continuing from the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus and from the 17th verse. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honour upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. So here is God himself making known to Moses the purpose which was about to take place with the Red Sea be before them and the Egyptians behind them. There was going to be a great, great miracle take place because God was in instructing Moses and saying to Moses, well, get on with what I tell you to do and you will see me at work. You will see me working as God. And the purpose behind it was to show to Pharaoh, to show to Egypt, as though it hadn't been enough that the firstborn of the Egyptians were killed. With that visitation by the angel of the Lord, where the blood had not been placed on the doorposts and the lintels. When I see the blood, I shall pass over thee, there was no blood seen on the houses, at the houses of the Egyptians. That was the distinction. There's as long as the Israelites had obeyed God. And after the Passover, supper, and the blood applied to the doorposts and the lintels, None of the Israelites' firstborn children, firstborn sons, I should say, and firstborn animals, firstborn of the animals, none of them died because God honoured his promises. And it is here that we see the God again honoured his promises. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. It was God himself who hardened the hearts. Not that they themselves hardened their own hearts. And I will get me honour. God's honour was at stake there. Whilst the Egyptians were looking to thwart the purpose of God. Doesn't this have a, a ring about it? Can we look at it? in the light of a current, current day. Certainly it can be. On the basis that God is the unchangeable God. And there are those, the equivalent of the Egyptians, who are looking and quite honestly being very successful at thwarting the, 
the purpose of God. Yet the time is ripe for God to, to get the honor by doing that which in like manner may be not leading to the Red Sea and being drowned in the Red Sea, but in like manner bringing his own judgment upon that which is thwarting the gospel going to every creature. Whether it be in the name of Christianity, or in the name of some other religion, where God's purpose is being thwarted, where those, there are those interfering in human affairs, and that means interfering in the human affairs of the gospel going to every creature, not some false gospel, not some bloodless gospel, but the gospel of the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. The gospel of the cross, the gospel of redemption, the gospel which calls sins, 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 and sinners, sinners. The gospel of resu the resurrection and ascension and glorification of the Son of God. The gospel which exalts God, which gives God his rightful place. And that which is against, against God as the Egyptians were against God. God is hardening hearts so that he will bring his own swift judgment. Oh, in the light of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, those of over a hundred years ago were very much looking for the the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were expecting, they were ready, daily ready, living in that light. Are you living in that light? It's as though in these days it has been brushed aside by that which calls itself Christianity and church. God is God. And God will have the final say. Not, not the humanists and the communists will have the final say. Not that which, which is religion that denies the power thereof will have the final say. It is God at work as God will have the final say. Are you ready for that great and terrible day of the Lord? Because here we have what turned out to be the great and terrible day of darkness for the Egyptians. They've gone too far. And that's undoubtedly why God has hardened the hearts of that, most of that which calls itself Christianity and church. Harden them ready for the judgment. Ready unless there is repentance for the lake of fire, for the torments of hell. Oh, we can't play with God. We can't act as though we are, we are God. This is very solemn. Should, should the Lord Jesus come today, do you know that you will go to heaven? Do you have that witness within you that you will go to heaven? That he will take you as part of his bride? 
You know with absolute certainty that you're saved. Have you taken him as your personal saviour and as your Lord? Have you repented of your sins? He gave his all for you. Have you given your all to him? Verse 18. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honour upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. I am. The I am, I am that I am, as was God had revealed to Moses at the burning bush. Oh, there's that which calls it our Christianity, which would basically laugh at me for, be, for preaching on these, these subjects and even mentioning the burning bush. And the burning bush that which now was not consumed. Yet God spoke at that burning bush. And made himself known, I am Jehovah. And there is none beside me. Yes, you mockers and you scorners. You that are full of pride. The day of reckoning will come. We're in the days of grace, but how long those days of grace will continue? Yet one thing is for sure. What is in this word of God and what has not yet been fulfilled shall be fulfilled. Take note here as how, how the Lord does get his honour. And the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel. So, the angel of God had been leading forward and had le led to the Red Sea. removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. That cloud came to protect and to cause a separation between the Israelites and the Egyptians that the Egyptians would no longer be able to come against the Israelites. And there, is, there in these days God is calling, Thus saith the Lord, Come out from among them, and be ye holy. Come out from that which dares to call itself Christianity and church, which dishonours me, because it encourages sins. It makes a mockery of my word. I will not always hold back my hand of judgment. My word declares the return of Jesus. And he shall only come for those who are his bride.
Take the opportunity now whilst it is day. Return to me. And to come out of that which is not of myself. O oh, remnant, come unto me. And be ye holy as I am holy. Filled with the very life of God. So we have here the separation. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these. Yes, the Israelites had their light. And where is the light? These days it is in the face of Jesus Christ. Oh, isn't he such a lovely, lovely Jesus? So that the one came not near the other all the night. So on this night before, God's judgment, there had been that separation. And it was God himself which brought about the separation. And Moses Yes, he'd had his instructions from God. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord co caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. So, it was quite, took quite some time. But the waters were divided, the way was open to move, move right out from the bondage of Egypt. And the Egyptians would no longer be able to pursue. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them. On their right hand and on their left. Yes, before they had seen the sea. Now they saw the sea having been parted and the way through. And he took faith in it to actually step out and go through. Going on with God takes faith day by day. Yet not our own faith. The unlimited faith of the Lord Jesus Christ is the faith required for these days. And it is as he has his way with us that that faith will be exercised. Because it will be that faith which pleases the Father. The same faith that the Lord Jesus had in the Father whilst he, he was on earth. Whilst Jesus was on earth. Speaking to the Father, just like Jesus would have spoken, because it's Jesus within us. And the children, yes, they went forward. And the Egyptians saw this. So what happened? And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. He was this, this army of Pharaoh. But God himself had drawn them there, he'd hardened their hearts. He was going to get the honour over them. And it came to pass that in the morning watch. 
The Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. It was what God did. And took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. There was an acknowledgement, a finally an acknowledgement, even where the firstborn of the Egyptians had been smitten, had died. There was not that acknowledgement of the Lord is the Lord. But here, finally, there was that acknowledgement that the Lord is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Yes, they tried to flee from the wrath which came upon them, and they couldn't flee. Yes. Where in the scriptures there is that which speaks of the judgment of God, even that which speaks of the third or to po of, of population. Yes, being wiped out. It's in the word. And it will be the judgment of God and all the other judgments. They will be fulfilled. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. And all the host of Pharaoh that came in, into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus, let's take note here. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. <clears throat> and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. In these days, where are those who are fearing the Lord and believing in the Lord? Flee from the wrath to come. You which calls itself Christianity and church and are apostate. God is giving you an opportunity. Will you take it? Otherwise, You'll be like the Egyptians. You 
face the wrath of Almighty God. O God, Thou art God. Thou art the Lord. And Thine honor is at stake. Whilst that which is unclean, unholy, is being seen and portrayed as Christianity and church in these days. Intervene as only you can intervene and show that you are God and call a separation between that which is unholy and that which is holy. The holiness received through the indwelling of God himself within the cleansed vessel of those who have repented of their sins and been cleansed with the blood of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for thy glory and thy glory alone. Amen.